um, so it today and receive the decree of the Lord over your life. Now, we've talked about storehouses of goodness, but there's another phrase I want to give you called houses of goodness. What is, what is, what is the difference between a storehouse and a house? Well, a storehouse is basically a place where you store treasure, you store grain, you store harvest. It's a treasury. You can store, it can be an armory. You can store weapons. You can store um, treasure, gold, silver. A house, of course, is a place where you dwell. It's a place where you live. It's a place where God lives. The house of God is a place where God's presence, God's dwelling place. The church should be the house of God. It is the house of God, uh, the local assembly. And we're not talking about a building, even though we do meet in buildings. When we come together, praise and worship God, his glory comes. God dwells. Uh, Bethel uh, is, is, is the house of God, the gateway to heaven. And so we're going to talk about the houses of goodness. Well, you can actually find goodness in the house of God. There's goodness in the house of God. Your church should be a place where people find goodness. Goodness can be released in the house of God through the preaching of the word, through the glory of God, through worship, through prayer, uh, through prophecy, through ministry. We can experience God's goodness in the house of God. Sometimes we don't think about the house of God being a house of goodness, but it's scriptural. We know it's a house of prayer. We know it could be a house of God's presence, a house of glory, but it's also a house of goodness. The, the verse I'm going to share with today is Psalm 65 and 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house even of thy holy temple will be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. So there's goodness connected to the house of God. That's what I'm going to talk about uh, today. Analyze this verse, write it down, read it. Thank you. Those that are sewing. Thank you for sewing into PayPal. You can do that anytime during the broadcast. Write down Psalm 65 and four. Let me read it again. Bless it. Happy. Prosperous is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Now, this verse highlights the themes of divine selection, closeness to God and the satisfaction found in God's presence. Notice the first part of the verse. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. This passage book begins by acknowledging that it is a profound blessing to be chosen by God. This choice is not random, but signifies God's sovereign grace and favor. Being chosen by God is a theme that runs through the Bible, emphasizing that it is God who initiates and sustains the relationship with his people. Now, I want you to see this, that if you're in the house of God, if you come to the house of God, if you, as the scripture says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. It was not by your choosing. God chose you. God chose you. Blessed is the man whom you choose. If God would not have chosen you and caused you to approach him, drew you by his spirit, you would not be in the house of God. There are millions of people that are not in God's house. They'll not be satisfied with the goodness of God's house. Why? Because God didn't choose them. You were chosen, elected. It's God's grace. When you realize that, you realize that you having a mind to go to the house of God. You having a place in the house of God. You being established, being rooted in the house of God. You being planted in the house of God you enjoying God's goodness is not by your choice. 
It is by the choice of God. Very humbling, but it shows you the will of God, the sovereign grace of God that comes upon anyone. <clears throat> Sometimes we can get so used to going to the house of God until we think it was us. No, it was God that chose you. The psalm, psalmist begins by saying, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach that he may be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. He causes to approach unto thee. This phrase indicates that it is God who enables and draws individuals to come close to him. Human beings in their natural state are distant from God due to sin. However, God's grace brings, bridges the gap, inviting and allowing them to enter his presence. This approach signifies intimacy, relationship, and the privilege of worship. God is the one that drew you to his house. Now, I came into the house of God in 1978. I, I, I came in really was miraculous. I was saved in a street meeting. Many of you know my testimony. I was not in the church when I, when I accepted the Lord. I, I was a junior at, in college at home on summer vacation. The Lord began to deal with me. I began to read the Bible just out of nowhere. No one was witnessing to me, talking to me. And a group of evangelists came on my street corner, 39th and Calumet on the south side of Chicago. That is in the area that is very historical. I, I grew up in a very historical area of Chicago called Bronzeville. Uh, I was actually married at Roberts Temple Church of God in Christ, 41st and State. That is a place where Emmett Till's funeral was. That's how historic this area was. I went to Holy Angels um, uh, Elementary School. Uh, Father Clemens was my pastor right there on Oakwood Boulevard. And uh, I grew up right a block east, a block west of King Drive. It used to be called South Park. Um, uh, grew up across the street from Wendell Phillips High School. My wife, my sister, my brother went to Wendell Phillips. That's the, the high school that Nat King Cole went to. So I grew up in a very historic area and it was on that street corner that I accepted the Lord and they told me to come to church. And I asked where the church was. It was, it was just about a block and a half away on King Drive called Prayer Band Pentecostal Church. Didn't even know what Pentecost meant. Never heard of Pentecost. Went to that church July 29th. That would have been July 30th, 1978. I've been in the house of God since. For 46 years, I've been in the house of God. It wasn't me. It was God drawing me. It was the, the will and grace of God. It was God's choice to bring me to his house. And I've enjoyed the goodness of God's house for 46 years. And um, it says that God draws you that you may dwell in his courts. Dwelling in, in, in God's courts implies a, a continual abiding presence with God. In the context of ancient Israel, this would refer to the temple, the central place of worship and God's manifest presence among his people. Um, for believers, it symbolizes living in close fellowship with God, continually experiencing his presence and blessings. Satisfied with the goodness of thy house. Now, I like this verse because it shows us there's goodness in the house of God. There's goodness, blessing, favor, grace, prosperity, good things, gifts, anointings, goodness of God's house. I'm calling this houses of goodness. Your church should be a house of goodness. It should be a place where you experience good things. It should not be a place where you experience harm, hurt, abuse, rejection, pain. That, that is not where you should go. Uh, if you're, it's not a place of control, witchcraft, domination, manipulation, it should be a place of goodness where you hear good, the good message of the gospel. You hear the good word of God. You, 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 you encounter God's glory, God's blessings. Good things are released in worship, prayer, in a session through preaching. I want you to believe that as you go to the house of God, as you hear the word of God, thank those who are sowing into he right here on also on um, 
Facebook, you can hit the, the, like, the stars next to the heart and like button. And so that way, thank you. Um, I want you to believe as we move into August, finish the rest of this year, that when you go to the house of God, you're going to experience, you're going to receive good things. You're going to get something good. Goodness is going to be released in every service. Let it be a service where God's goodness, grace, blessing, anointing, power, a favor is released over your life because it should be a house of goodness. We should be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. The psalmist expresses deep contentment and fulfillment found in God's house. The goodness refers to the abundance of God's blessings, including his provision, protection, and spiritual nourishment. Dwelling in God's presence brings ultimate satisfaction, surpassing an earthly pleasure or provision, even of thy holy temple. The holy temple represents the sacredness and purity of God's dwelling place. It is a place set apart for worship and encountering God. The emphasis on holiness underscores the reverence and all that come with being in God's presence it also highlights the transformative power of worshiping in a holy place where God's character influences and changes those who draw near. Uh, as you're coming on, please share the broadcast. I, I believe many more people need to hear this message on houses of goodness. So if you're on Facebook, please put this on your page and share it. What are the implications of this verse? This verse underscores God's initiative in choosing and drawing people to himself. God chooses and draws people to his house. It emphasizes the blessings of, of being close to God, including the satisfaction and fulfillment that comes from his presence. The verse also highlights the sacredness of worship and the transformative power of God's holy presence. For believers, this verse encourages a deep appreciation for the privilege of being chosen by God the uh, and access to his presence. It calls for a response of gratitude, reverence, and a desire to dwell continually in fellowship with God. It also reassures believers that true satisfaction and contentment are found in God's presence and the goodness of God's house. In summary, Psalm 65 and 4 celebrates the blessedness of being chosen by God and the profound satisfaction found in his presence. It highlights the themes of divine selection, the privilege of drawing near to God, and the deep contentment that comes from worshiping in his holy temple. Houses of goodness. I pray that God would raise up houses of goodness in every city, churches, fellowships, gathering places where people would come and experience the goodness of God. Good things being released. Houses of goodness in every city, every region. Houses of blessing. Houses of God's presence. Houses of God's glory. Let it be raised up. And let you be a person that is in a house of goodness. May your church be a house of goodness. May your fellowship be a house of goodness. The Lord said, I reserve goodness for those who come to my house. And those who come into my presence and those who love my glory and those who worship me and those who gather in my name. The Lord said, I, I am releasing good things for you. And the Lord said, even as you gather in the days to come, get ready to receive new goodness and new mercy and new grace and new favor shall be released over your life through the preaching of the word, through the prophetic utterances released, through prayer, through worship, through my presence. Get ready to receive good things. I'm going to cause you to appreciate and have a revelation of what it means to be in a house of goodness and by faith to receive goodness when you come into my presence. The Lord said, as you gather together in the days to come, believe me for good things. Believe me for goodness to come into your life from opening up the storehouses of goodness and I'm releasing goodness in my house and I've raised up houses of goodness in different regions. Find that house of goodness. Find that place of goodness, find that place of blessing, find that place of my glory, says the Lord, and watch my goodness and mercy be released over your life. For this is a season 
of new goodness for you. This is a season of good things. A season of goodness will come. It'll, it'll come because you have dwelt in my house and you love my presence and you love worship and you love to spend time with me and to encounter my glory. For the Lord said, there's goodness in my glory. There's goodness in my presence. There's goodness when you gather together to praise and worship me. There's goodness released when you hear my word. There's goodness released through preaching and teachings. And I will anoint my ministers to release goodness as they preach and prophesy and teach. As they minister, they'll prophesy good things and release good things. And you'll have faith for good things. For faith will come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So get ready for new goodness as you get ready to go into a new month. New beginnings, get ready for new goodness, new things coming to your life. Believe me, open up, expect it, says God. Expect it, says God. This is a season of releasing new goodness. And the Lord said, forget the, the pain and the hurt of the past. And if you've been in a house where they, you were not treated good, if you've been in a place where there was no goodness, release it, move on, but find the house of goodness and watch my goodness overwhelm your life. And I'll, I'll release healing. I'll release restoration. It is a season of restoration, a season of the double, a season of increase, a season of multiplication, a season which you'll find goodness in your finances, a season of goodness in your churches, your ministry, your business, your families. I'll do. I'll give you good relationships, good health, good sleep, good rest. You'll, you'll enjoy my goodness, says the Lord. So, Father, I release that word over the houses of goodness. And I pray for churches that are houses of goodness. And I pray for good leadership, good pastors, good words, good teaching, good things being released in that house. Thank you, Father, for good worship, good songs, good things, good psalmists, good minstrels. Lord, thank you for good things coming to your people as we get ready to go into the month of August. Let it be a good month. Let August be a good month. Let August be a month of good things. Let August be a month in which heaven releases goodness over your life. Let heaven touch your life in a good way. I pray and decree it today and I prophesy today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.